Hi, um, so we're gonna go through some bar technique today. So a few people have mentioned about just that initial setup at the bar and thinking about um, some of the kind of the techniques that I talk about maybe when I'm queuing, but maybe just take a bit longer to find that setup and maybe some of those positions. All right, so first of all, the height of your bar, all right? You need something that's nice and stable and steady. Chair is the best thing. Um, make sure it's got a bit of substance to it. It's not too light and, and will just move um, at the lightest of touches. Um, maybe a kitchen counter, something like that, a mantelpiece. Um, anything that is a, a, a kind of a good, sturdy, solid base. Um, and then, preferably, you're wanting your arm to be able to slope down towards that chest. You don't want anything too high, it's gonna lift your shoulder, but similarly, you don't want anything that's too low so that you've already got that lean, all right? So around um, that kind of placement here, elbow kind of midpoint to your waist, and you're just reaching out. The touch on the bar is light. You're trying not to grip because you're trying not to physically lean. It's a steady, it's an aid, and it's a balance, all right? So the bar position, usually I'm gonna have my hand on the bar. If I'm in a side lying and I'm slightly further away, I go down to this forearm point. I'm just gonna turn this so you can see it. Where my elbow is down, the arm is down. And again here, I'm trying not to grab. I'm trying to hold that level there in that arm, okay? So that's that second position. Sometimes you can have that arm there and actually just stable yourself again with the other side, all right? So particularly if you're just starting off and you're really trying to kind of get that shape um, and your stability right. So it's either here, 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 all right? And then if you're facing that bar, you're always wanting that length through the arms, the arms to be long. So I'm not too close up and down like this. When you're out and you've got that little bit of length from the bar, you can really work on getting your body positioning right. If I'm too close up, then I'm gonna to be too far back, yeah? Or similarly, if I'm reaching out for it, I'm gonna be in that lean. So you want to be arms distance length, yeah? And reaching out, so the body can be nice and straight, and I'm just reaching for that bar, I'm touching for it, okay? So that's your arm positioning. So, body. You um, are in either in a turned out position, first position, or a parallel position. Parallel just means that they are feet are directly underneath the hips and they are both square, parallel, next to each other, and there's a tiny gap between the big toe joints and the heels. Okay, so in this position, you are wanting to scoop up through the calves, through the inner thigh, draw up through the pelvic floor, scooping inside the body, and then just drawing that lower abdominal muscle wall in towards the body as well. Your back wants to be straight. So when I say scoop up in the pelvic floor, what we're not doing is scooping under, yeah? You're wanting to lengthen and lift. We're trying to um, kind of eradicate the, the arches as well, by being straight, but again, it's not a tuck under, it's not a collapse. Shoulder blades are drawn down the spine, and the back is, is straight and long. So whenever I do any form of bend or plie, you're wanting to imagine that your bottom and shoulder blades are touching the wall or at an imaginary wall behind you. So as I come down into that, what I'm trying to do is come straight down, sinking straight down, all right? So what I'm not doing is leaning forward or tucking underneath. Straight down, so that wall is behind me. So that position stays the same, whether I'm on the flat of my feet or whether I'm raising up onto the heel, up off the heels onto the toes, okay? And that position there does not change. So whether I'm sinking down or lifting up, down or up, it's like I'm sliding down a wall behind me. So then your feet, you're wanting to bring your heels together, all right, when you're up on your toes. And you're actually physically pushing them together so that then when I plie down or bend down, I'm really squeezing and pushing those heels together. That is going to help engage through those inner thighs, through the bottom, scooping up with the pelvic floor, it's giving that little bit of pressure. So pinch those heels together, 
opening out in the thighs, so you're wanting those to be pushing backwards. And try to think of the thighs opening, not the knees. Position or thought or visualization needs to be here. Wrapping and opening out in the thighs. At the same time, we're wrapping and opening out in the chest, in the shoulders. And then when I use the word pulse, it is a push. It's a pulse. It's a lowering. It's not a bounce, okay? And here, the weight. So the weight is in the balls of the feet, not gripping in the toes. Heels are pushing together. I can actually kind of lift certainly my big toe off the floor in this position. So the weight is in the balls of the feet, but it's almost shifted towards that kind of little toe and the next two next to it. All right, so that's where that weight positioning is. That's gonna take it off the knees. The moment I bring that forwards and push through, can you see, I'm pushing into that, that's going straight into my knees. So I'm wanting to reach out and back, opening out in those inner thighs, activating through my glutes here straight away, abs are pulled in, ribs are down, shoulders are down, and that is that pulse, all right? So then when we come up from that pulse, you squeeze, you're gonna drive up with the glutes. Use those inner thighs to squeeze together and then pull back down. So drive up through those glutes, lowering back down. Driving up through the glutes, lowering back down and out. All right? So they are kind of the, your basic positions when you're in that strength isometric position, which is the working from both legs and we're working on those, those kind of those strength moves. So when we come to lifting the leg, one of the most important things that you want to think about is this supporting leg, not necessarily the leg that is up and in action and working. So the first thing I've got to think about is creating space between my bar and my hip. What I don't want to do is sink. I want to lift that hip up and I'm trying to draw my weight up and out of that leg. So if we work from the ground up, the foot on the floor, I'm get, can, if, I want you to see if you can see my, my foot, I'm going to roll it out. So I'm picking up my instep, the arch of my foot, I'm physically rolling it out. So the shape of my foot on the floor is the heel running down the outside edge of my foot and into the balls of the feet. So I'm really lifting up, scooping up. From there, that lift up and away from the knee. And it's like I'm trying to pick my muscle up away from my knee. I'm drawing it up, inner thigh and that great big quad muscle at the front, lifting and pulling away. That stops you locking out your knee because you, what you don't want to do is lock it but it does want to be lifted and elevated. Now think about the hip lifting up and out as well. So everything is scooping up like someone is pulling it all up. Keep that thigh, that hip in, arm is on. Okay, so then this leg can have no weight in it whatsoever, but I don't sink and collapse. Okay, I'm lifting up and out. That also goes into my oblique. I'm lifting out, up, up and out here. Okay, so that level, that kind of feeling of extension and lift is here. On the bar, I am keeping that hand light, but I'm almost pulling up a little bit on that bar. It's almost a little pull to help aid that feeling of lift and length. Spine is long, back of the neck is long, arm is wide. Guys, this doesn't have to be balletic. Arm can be straight out, yeah? So you don't have to make it all pretty. You can just have it nice and strong as well. So then we come into that, uh, that kind of side position where the elbow comes down towards the bar. And again, you don't have to get your leg up really high. All right, it's about your positioning. If that, lifting your leg high is gonna knock you off kilter, off balance, then take it down. What we're looking for is that length through the body. The continued lift of this base oblique under here, opening in the shoulders, opening in the hips. So it's almost like you're working between two planes of glass or something, all right? Hand can stay on the hip if, if it goes into the shoulder, or it can just hover over the leg at the same time there. So again, this positioning is something to work on. If you're down here to start with, great, that's fine. Okay, and then we're working on lifting that leg gradually as you get stronger, okay? As you lift that leg, making sure that this upper body doesn't move though. If you feel that collapse or that turn, then come back down. Okay, so 
that's your sideline position. When you lift the leg, when you're um, in more of a parallel position, and you're lifting your leg from behind, scoop those in a, a internal abdominal muscles, drop that tailbone nice and heavy, engaging in the glute, and I'm lifting the leg, scooping and lifting and lengthening. Back shot. Lifting, scooping, lengthening. Now, you want your hips to try and stay square, which means that they are facing the same way. So if I had two torches or headlamps attached to my hips, they would stay the same way as I pass the leg. So if I, if I know that if I'm going like that, yeah, then those lights are moving. So I want them to be here, extended straight. That leg can then pulse up, up, and the pulse comes from here, up, up. And I'm still pulling away and up in that leg, I'm still light on my bar. Scoot, ribs down, shoulder down. Hand can stay on the hip, certainly at the beginning. If you are gonna extend it, again, draw down, root down, through the shoulder blade, through the scapula. Good, so from there, you can go from that length and position, turning, arm comes down to the bar, and we come to the side line position. We turn it back round, the hip rotates, everything else stays in position, the hips come to square. We shine that torch out. We come out into that nice rotated position and then we come back round to square. Good. So anything, anything at the bar that you do, think about the lines of the body and think about the, the kind of the oppositional stretch that you can do. From the top of the head, down, rooting through the heels of the feet. From the arm that is on the bar, out to the leg that's at the side. Top of the head, straight down through the body. So always thinking of lines that you're creating and the oppositional stretches that are in those lines, okay? Um, it's, it's all about practice, it's all about finding those positions. Really good thing to do is to find that feeling of the wall behind you when you're first starting in bar. And particularly if you're not used to being up on your toes and working. So one of the first things that we should be doing is just lifting up and down and up and down and getting used to those feet working, getting used to the calves working. And then you can come up and bend that down, finding that shape of the back Staying long, staying straight, pushing back and up, bending down, sliding down that wall, reaching and scooping up, taking it down and feeling what muscles are working as you are doing these moves. Squeeze the glutes, taking it down, drive up through those glutes and then taking it down. Good, lots of practice uh, and then you can come join some classes. Thank you.